All right, before I get started this morning, uh, I'm going to ask that you, I knew I wouldn't like it. Don't listen to what I have to say this morning, just because I promise you Satan has been struggling this morning. This message was laid on my heart several months ago, and I've just had this heaviness. I've shared it with Christy. And I know it's right because when I drove past the other day, going coming over here to the farm, the billboard, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. I was sitting in my office Thursday, and a gentleman from the service center came by and one conversation led to another and we got to talking about just the things that was going on around us. And Ronnie looked at me and he said, you know, even Noah tried and people wouldn't listen. And I looked at him and I said, thank you. And he said, what? And I said, I'm preaching Sunday and that's my sermon. You've just given me confirmation. I don't know where this service is going to go because I may be like a dog chasing a rabbit. But I know what God has laid on my heart. And, and there's a lot of scriptures. So bear with me. And I, I know a lot of people don't like to be read to. I don't. But I think some of the, the words that are... Of what we need to be hearing. You know, as it says out here, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. But if you would turn with me to Genesis 6, verse 11. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I've decided to destroy all living creatures. For they have filled the earth with violence, and yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. And if you'll look down at verse 22, it's not on your sheet, but it says, Noah did everything that God commanded. Take yourself back during that time, and when God came to Noah and he said, Noah... I'm tired of everything that's going on on earth. Did God make a mistake? No, he didn't. It's because he gave us a free will, just like he's given us a free will today to make choices of the way we're supposed to live. But the people, even back then, chose to live the way they wanted to. What would have happened if Noah would have not have listened to God? Because everything on this earth started back with Noah and his three sons. Can you imagine? I believe Noah was, what, about 500 years old, I think, whenever that happened. Can you imagine this old man sitting out here with all this wood, building this huge boat? Hadn't rained in a, in a long time, probably about like it has been around here. I can imagine what people were saying. A crazy old man. I mean, he's done lost it. No different than with us. How many people are looking at us as being foolish? My question is, is how many of us are building that ark? You know, um, and as we go through this message this morning, I don't want us to look so much at... The things necessarily around us as being, I mean, Don, you, you hit the nail on the head this morning when you said we've got to be observant of the things that are around us. That's warning signs. As bad as it is, it's warning signs. Every nail, every smudge of tar that Noah put on that ark and as people walk by, 
it was a warning. But what was so cool about it was the length of time that it took Noah to build that ark. And every time someone passed by, it was time. God was giving those people time to repent. Instead, it was, I have plenty of time. They were too busy making fun of Noah than what the message was that Noah and God was trying to send to the people. In Genesis 19, 12 through 13, another warning you know the population of the earth had, had begun to populate God sent two angels to Lot Sodom and Gomorrah meanwhile the angels questioned Lot do you have any other relatives here in the city they ask get them out of this place your son-in-laws, sons, daughters, anyone else, for we're about to destroy this city completely. The outcry against this place is so great, it has reached the Lord and He has sent us to destroy it. No warning. How many angels have come to us? How many of your relatives has been laid on your heart? You know, all the way through this Bible, it's warning after warning after warning. These stories didn't end up in this Bible by accident. It's all leading up to, the, to what we're seeing today. How many of us are heeding the warning? Not just for ourselves, but do we have sons, son-in-laws, daughters, cousins, relatives, friends, neighbors? God says, go out and tell them. Lot had two daughters. Lot said, told the angels, my, fian uh, my daughter's fiancés, go tell them, because this city will be destroyed tomorrow. What'd they reply? They thought he was joking. And we all know the story is Lot leaves, the city is destroyed. Why is it destroyed? Because God cannot bear the fact of the corruption. It's not that God had made a mistake. It's not that God made something that wasn't perfect. But it was the choice of choice that men was making. You know, when we look back, we look at the flood of Noah. We look at the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Not only did we have a flood that was actually physical in water, but there was also a flood of corruption. Corruption, I mean, hey, it's a whole lot easier to live a corrupt life than it is that of a Christian. What would have happened if Lot wouldn't have listened? and followed what was came to him through the words of two angels. Now if you'd turn with me to Matthew 24. You say, well, Noah, Sodom, Mar, that was all Old Testament. This is talking to us. Absolutely. Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. This is what's really cool. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nations will go to war against nations and kingdom against kingdoms. There will be famines, earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all of this is only the first of the birth of pains with more to come. Then you'll be arrested, 
persecuted and killed, you'll be hated all over the world because you are a follower. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures... To the end will be saved and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come I don't know about you but wars persecution Christians being killed you know we can look at this and where this really got to riding on me pretty hard was every time I turn on the television I would see this happening and my heart would go out to those families and one night I was sitting watching, and I'm not trying to promote one nation over another, but I was sitting watching Fox News. And I was watching this, and it just hit me. It's like, as bad as it is, God's saying, build your ark. These are warning signs that God is sending to us, and we can worry about these. And yes, we want to pray for these people, but how many of us look at it as... God, you told us this was going to happen 2,000 years ago. Why are we so surprised? How many times do we sit in our house or we sit on our duff instead of telling people, guys, they're here. The signs are here. How many relatives you have? Just like the angels told a lot. How many daughters or son-in-laws or whatever you have do you want to see saved? What are we doing about it? You know, we've talked about that in this church. We've had a lot of people that have come and visited this church. What are we doing about it? We have such a ministry, the shoebox, the overseas ministries, South America ministries. We have such an outreach. What about the person that you work with? What about the person that lives next door to you? Twenty four verse thirty six. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself, only the Father knows. But when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered the boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them away. That's the way it was when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Permit the house to be broken into. If you have faith and you believe this Bible, then why aren't we doing more about it? It's pretty. My Bible, it's read. That means Jesus said it. If He said it, it's going to happen. How many times do people look at us just like they did at Noah? You're crazy. I know I've used this reference before, and I'll, I'll use it again. Because it keeps sticking in my mind of what he said, and it's, this, this quote's not exact. But we've all heard, heard of Penn and Teller. But Penn Jelliot, he is a ren public professed atheist. He makes no bones about telling you that I'm an atheist. 
But he made a comment. You can go on YouTube and see exactly the comment that he made. If you have such a passion for your God, why aren't you telling more people about it? If you have the faith and really believe what you're telling us, then why aren't you telling more people about it? Do you have to let me go to hell why aren't you trying to convince me that what you're telling me is the truth and I thought wow when an atheist says that that word you would turn to 1 John 2 29 Uh, 29, I'm sorry, I made a mistake on this. 1 John 2 and 24. <laughs> you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in His fellowship, we will enjoy eternal life just as He's promised. Second Peter 3, 8 through 14. Second Peter 3, 8 through 14. You must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really slow about His promise, as some people may think. No, He's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as an unexpected as a thief. Then the heavens will all pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire in the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Thank you. Destroyed godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. Because on that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we're looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth he has promised in a world filled with God's righteousness. So dear friends, while you're waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. You know, it's so easy to get wrapped up into the things of the world or wrapped up in the things around us. We've got to quit being, no, I'm not going to say ashamed, but we've got to, we have, and I'm challenging you because as well. Because I'm telling you personally, I struggle. In my position, I am struggling real hard. Had a conversation with one of my employees the other day. She came into the office and we were talking and, and I said, you know, with my profession and when I signed on that certificate, the state says that I can't mix God in school but there's not a law that will keep God from going with me wherever I go I struggle with that I know myself I know that God's put me in a place I really don't know why yet there's been a lot of good things happening in just a short period of time that I God doesn't put us in places by accident. My challenge to you as well as to myself is we need to seize those times because God's told us that time is short. One day is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. It's been a long time ago that these words were spoken. But as we look around and as bad as it is, and yes, we need to be praying for those people. We need to be praying for the things that are around us. But I think we've also got to be looking at these as warnings. 
Because tell, God's telling us how we're supposed to be responding to this. My question today is, are you building an ark within yourself? Are you helping to build the big ark that's going to save the people of the corrupt world because God says He's going to destroy it? Are we heeding the warning signs? And are we ready to take the challenge? And are we ready to get in the boat? Bow with me. Lord, I just thank you. Thank you for loving us so much that you make salvation so easy. You sent your son to die on the cross for each and every one of us. And as he was hanging on that cross, you had every person in this congregation and everyone that's outside these doors on your mind. God, you're so patient. You know, Lord, there's a lot of times that things happen and we question. But if we sit back and we look at the big picture, you have given us lots of warnings. And your desire is that for every person to spend eternity with you. And God, I just challenge each one that's in here today to take your warnings and to accept the challenge to get as many as we can gathered up because we know that time is short. God, it may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be hundreds years from now. But Lord, I just pray that each one of the members of this congregation will begin to develop that burning desire to start filling your boat. And God, if there's any person here this morning that's still trying to hang on to that baggage, because you've told us, Lord, you have told us what's going to happen. Lord, if there's any person here, I beg you to put such a conviction on them that they will not leave this building this morning until they have made it right. Because God, I want to have that desire to take anyone and everyone that comes in my path with me. Because I'd like to share the same desire that you have for each one of them. Because God, I pray that we are more than just a convenient Christian or a Sunday Christian. I pray, Lord, that you will make each one of us a day-to-day, -day, an hour-to-hour. -hour. That whether it be what we say or just what we do, that people will know that we're building that ark and that we're trying to do what you have commissioned each one of us to do, and that is to gather up the flock. Thank you, Lord. If there's any person here that... It's not me. I promise you it's not me. But I know myself and there's enough of us in here that will love you enough. If there's anyone here that has any question whatsoever that maybe your art isn't quite where it needs to be, I challenge you please come it's not an embarrassment 
But God also says that if you can't confess in front of man, how can I acknowledge you in front of my Father? Please step out. And let us pray with you, pray for you. Because if there was ever a time to seek the lost, now's the time. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us. And Lord, you know the hearts in each one of these that are here this morning. And Lord, if there's if there's any of them that are, that's holding back, I, I just I ask that the conviction will be placed so heavy. God, you know we can't do it for them. But Lord, as we leave this place, just ask that you'll continue to give us that burning desire to do your will and to spread your word. And Lord, I just pray right now that as we go into the fellowship hall that how lucky we are to be able to have that fellowship in a safe environment and to be able to have the food that is spread before us that many today will not have that opportunity. Come to you this morning, Lord, just to say how thankful we are and that you will use this food to bless our body and to nourish our body. And with that nourishment, Lord, that we will face your challenge that you have given us. We thank you, Lord. Amen.